Bob Steinitz, and I have a different reason for being here than Tim does. Tim is interested in the sustainability of this area. It's your place, it's not mine. I don't care if it's sustainable or not. I'm here for a different reason. Yeah, but you're visiting. I know, I know. Young man. I, I'm here for a different reason. Uh, Rishi uh, is a PhD student at CASA, but he's an extremely experienced software developer. He's an engineer, MIT in Michigan, and he's worked for Microsoft and Honda, which do things collaboratively and digitally. And he met me, I met him two years ago after a lecture when he said, I think I can do what you're doing digitally. And I said, I've thought about that in 50 years. We've done it partially digitally, but never before. And so for the last two years, we've been collaborating a lot. And as his thesis, he's been developing software to support the kind of synthesis that's a necessary step in a design process at scale, at size. Now, I've written a book about that, and I've, in that book, and in the lectures that I give, and gave last night, I basically argue about the characteristics of large projects. And the software that Rishi has developed uh, is basically fulfilling those requirements. I'm going to show that in the talk. But my purpose, since there are things that have been developed since the last workshop, which was doubling Savannah and Chatham County in population and figuring out what to do when sea level rises a meter in an area that's basically flat and wetlands. Um, there are things that have been developed in the last month that we're testing here for the first time which is the idea that it matters whether the chicken comes first or the eggs comes first. In other words, which comes first, the sewers or the houses? Interesting question. And so one of the things we want to do is to see under pressure and in a context very much like what Tim is describing here, a highly regulated, let me say, relatively self-satisfied county in terms of its ability to manage its affairs. Whether taking a 40-year perspective in the future cracks that system. Will it last if you double the population of this area? And furthermore, does it matter the order in which it develops? In other words, if you take a 40-year pr uh, perspective, are you gonna design an infrastructure and housing pattern and then fill it or you could just let it grow and then finally figure out where the infrastructure should be when it's possibly to the building. So we're interested in that problem and how that problem gets attacked by a group of considerably knowledgeable and experienced people. So I have, I have the problem, the perspective saying you're dealing with a generic problem. I'm interested to see whether the software can support this generic problem. The specifics of King County, I don't know it. It's your problem. So the question of whether it makes sense in King County okay. is his decision. The question of whether it makes sense as a software supporting a type of problem that's generic. I'll make a judgment, we'll make a judgment, but actually you'll make a judgment. Right? Yeah, that's, that's our purpose. The software that's being developed by Rishi, he'll explain, but I can tell you that what it's intended to do is to be free, ubiquitous, and not necessarily connected to the internet aimed at something that somebody can take into the field and make decisions because they have to be made fast. A problem like we're doing in two days is normally done in two years with an awful lot of public consultation. But what if there was an earthquake tomorrow morning? And it's that kind of a scale, needing something real fast that is primitive, fast, and understandable. One of the characteristics is you will find us not talking a lot no presentations really. Why? Because everything is color-coded and the simple English declarative prose and diagrams. So it's intended to support a process where everybody can understand it and it's not dependent upon high technology. It's purposeful. So don't expect, don't expect us to look at every street, don't expect us to look at every piece of property. That's not what it's about. What it's about is, should we grow in that direction and put a lot of people there? And I mean the word a lot, not 503. 
So it's, it's a strategic design process, not a tactical design process, although it can be. All right. Some, some words of background that, that is a repeat. <coughs> repeat from the lecture that I gave yesterday. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give 20, 20 slides. This is the cover of my book. The, the character the character of the problem. How can you keep a Well, maybe you can. The, char the character of the problem that we're dealing with is, is, is not the substance of any profession or any kind of people. It's a collaboration. It has to be. It has to be between the people of the place, and I'm assuming, in this case, that at least some of you know the area that we're working on. The geographic sciences, um, I don't mean geography. I mean a group of sciences, including geography, ecology, hydrology, economics, sociology, you name it. Information technologies, including pencil and paper. Design professions, architecture, landscape architecture, planning, civil engineers, and I think in this definition, lawyers and dancers. And they're making design mean intentional change, not object. Using words and our aim, in this case, is to change geography by the start. Let me comment on that title, why that title. I have enough experience in a modeling environment, which has an, a, a mathematical modeling environment, in which the assumption is that you capture the key variables, and that if you tweak the variables, you will find a different answer. That's how modeling operates in transportation and in other kinds of systems. The problem is, what if the answer is consistently bad? And you realize that the model itself can't make it better. And you need to do something different, fundamentally different. That's the, the circumstance that I find myself in more often than not. So I'm interested in how do you design in a modeling environment? How do you add to a, a model environment? And that's why I use the word by design, as opposed to by tweaking the model. Okay? Every project, every study area has six questions. How should you, do, you describe it? How does it work? Is it working well? How might it be changed? What difference the change has caused? And what should be done? And these combine data, knowledge, and values in assessment and data, knowledge, and values in intervention. And these languages have to be the same. Those languages have to be the same. And those have to be the same. And you go through a framework like this three times. The first time is to understand the context, the why questions. And Tim and his people have done that. What they've done, and Tim has explained it, is he says, we're going to study this part of King County, and we've got 10 systems that we've defined the problem is at. Now, there are problems that are left out. There's no public health model in our work. There's no local taxation model in our work. There's no private finance model in our work. We've decided in our wisdom, that the 10 that we are going to work on is bounding the problem. And you know that that's wrong. But 10 is a nice number. And if we had 30, we'd drive ourselves crazy. So there's, there's an outlier that may in fact be more important than the group that's in the problem. So we understand the context from Tim's introduction and our own knowledge and whatever he's here about. And you usually do this in this order. You say, where the hell is King County? Let's get a map. What's going on there? Is it doing well? How might it be changed? Well, we're going to think a lot of people are going to come in that area. What it's going to do, we think there's going to be problems. Flooding problems, critical resources problems, school providing problems, etc. And there are people who need to make decisions. The second time you pass through it are the how questions. How are we going to work together? And I'm in charge of that. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to use one particular method mixed up with little pieces of others. And it's driven by the decision model. We're going to work in teams in which each of you working in a team will be asked to represent an interest, an interest group vis-a-vis -vis the current way of managing and regulating development in King County. And those interest groups differ. They have different priorities for these 10 systems. For example, you may be representing an ecologically sustainability group, which says protecting our critical land resources uh, is the single most important thing and let the developers go where they don't do that. Or you may be representing the private development industry, in which case knowing where you want to be is more important, and then you'll manage by mitigation the critical resources of your planet. That's one of those conflicts of chicken and egg as well. If you know what the 10 systems are that are important, you know you need 10 impact models and what they are. And if you need that, do that. You know that the design itself, how might it be changed, is going to be captured in those 10 systems. One of them is housing, one of them is commerce and industry, one of them is transport, one of them is infrastructure. So we're going to locate sewers, roads, commerce, industry, and housing in an environment which is sensitive to critical resources surface water, groundwater, and two others. And in order to do that, we have to evaluate the landscape in terms of those 10 systems. And in order to do that, to that, we have to understand how they work. In order to do that, we have to have data. And that task has been done by Tim and his team. In other words, we're starting this workshop with a set of 10 evaluation maps. That's been done in preparation. And there's a database that is sitting behind that, and that's his work and her work and her work and his work. And it's out there somewhere on these computers. And only now, if we were starting this problem from scratch, would we know what data we need. And that's important, because there's too much data out there in the world. And, and the, this workshop and the technology that underlies it is designed for not big data, but small data. In fact, smallest possible data. Smallest possible data to do the job at the scale we want to do it. Why? Because we want it to stand alone on a small computer, and not be necessarily connected to the internet. However, last month we did this project with Georgie, which I showed in our lecture last night, in which we had people in the workshop who had their own enterprises all over the coast of Georgia, and they were pulling in data files from their own computers that augment the ones we have. There's nothing that prevents somebody here who has a computer somebody somewhere there from bringing in data from their own enterprise and not only looking at it, but probably linking it into the system. But we're not starting that. So here we are now, ready to start our work. The third, the third test is what, where, and when. We have our data, we have our process models, we have our evaluation models, and we're going to be proposing change. That's where we're actually starting. Everything we do is going to be assessed for its impacts. We're going to propose something for development. And three things can happen. No, maybe, and yes. No means do it again. And it may mean bringing in better data, revising the process models, reevaluating. But mostly it's going to be redesigning and trying to improve, meaning get better impacts. Less bad ones, more good ones. Maybe means maybe we're working at the same at the wrong scale. And and the software supports zooming out and zooming in. And because of the nature because of the nature of this particular problem, in which Mary, Tim, mainly, have, have basically defined evaluation in terms of current regulations, the evaluation models basically show you that many of these development types are not free to go anywhere. They're constrained by current regulation. So finding sites inside the current regulations for development is not so simple. It means zooming in. 
And for example, you may decide that the town of Kent is where you're going to focus. Well, then zoom in on Kent and work at the scale of Kent. If you're going to decide to spread people all over the place in low density, zoom out. Okay? So there's, there's a very important question of what's the right scale to do the kinds of things we're doing at. And then there's a zoom capability that allows you to try to figure that out. Furthermore, furthermore, the study area is sufficiently large that it's probably easiest to understand it in plan, in, in a two-dimensional plan, not even with terrain. But if you're zooming in, let's say, to Kent, maybe it's best to look at it in a three-dimensional or four-dimensional uh, representation. And the software has been used for two or three years, linked to City Engine or three-dimensional visualization techniques. We're not going to do that in the workshop. But trust me, the output, the output can be linked in. And yes means we're finished. And we're finished at 6 o'clock tomorrow. And automatically the designs are, of course, perfect. The problem is they're going to be different. The problem is going to be different. That they're going to be different. And so there are a whole set of techniques built in to the software, but I'm not likely to use those in the software, but outside the software. In which, I suppose we have six designs and they're all different. The question then still remains, what should we do? And the software supports four different ways of attacking that question, four. And we're going to do that. So our designs have to be basically finished, for better or worse, around midday tomorrow. Furthermore, we know from our experience that the first design is never as good as the second. The second iteration is never as good as the third, but the fourth is probably worse than the third. So we're going to be aiming to do at least two, if not three, iterations of a, a plan for the area in each of these teams, simply to show that a rapid feedback mechanism allows you to improve, and you don't have to invest your life in your first ideas. Furthermore, the software, as Rishi will show you, says that every, every diagrammatic idea is public property. In other words, your team has a set of ideas, their team has a set of ideas. Your computer will show their ideas. Their computer will show your ideas, whether they use them or not, is up to them. So there's no private property in this, in this software. Let me show you the, the, the way we're gonna, be, we're gonna be working. You're gonna be working in a mixed team. I'm going to take inventory of you as you introduce yourselves. We're going to be asking everybody to introduce themselves in 20 seconds. And you're going to then classify yourself. Am I a purple person? Am I an orange person? Am I a green person? Am I a blue person? The cover of my book. Where do you fit in the cover of the intersecting Venn diagram of information technology, geographic science, design, or local. Are you in the middle? Are you all four of them? Are you one of them? And we're going to try to make mixed mixed groups. And one of the interesting things about collaboration is you never know. You never know as you go through a process of collaboration whose idea it was and frankly who cares. So it's it's exchanging ideas but then focusing the ones that fit your objectives the best. And it's never linear. It will be messy. But the good thing about a framework is you know where you made a mistake and you can go back. It's called learning. And it's highly structured. Now, what's the characteristic of a geodesign change problem? They're complicated with at least 10 systems. Each system has data process evaluation models. There are many ways to change and improve each system. These are policies and projects. And we make a distinction between policies and projects. The way this is set up, a policy is a guideline to somebody else. A project is something that gets built. If you have a policy, they don't have to follow it. 
if you have a policy, you can turn it into a project by saying, enforce that policy, and then it's a costly affair. In other words, a policy is an idea. A project is the enforcement of a policy or the building of something like a policy. Assume there are 10 different ways to improve it, each system. That's roughly 100 diagrams. Each is a diagram. Some are partial solutions, some are GIS derived, and some in fact can be rule based and smart. We've, we've done one project, I've done one project that's included smart diagrams, where an algorithm tells you and generates the diagram. For example, keep your houses 200 meters away from streams and make them this big. Change to a design is a relational synthesis in space and time of sets of system changes, sets of diagrams. This is the, this number five is the, the, the thing that's different between this workshop and the one last month at Georgia. Each change move has impacts across all systems. These are quantities and qualities and can be expressed as graphs, maps, and timelines. In other words, if we have a map that evaluates attractiveness for housing and one of the criteria is sewers and a map shows that there are no sewers someplace and we put a sewer in that location <coughs> and the project the evaluation map will change well that's built into the system map. that's huge because that means that the chicken and egg problem is important which comes first, the houses in the streets. There are many ways of synthesis, of making a design. Some are more effective than others, depending. We've done at least one experiment where the same problems have been given to different teams, and each team is assigned a different way of designing, which I'll show you in a minute. And it matters. Some methods are better at some sizes and scales, and some methods are not as effective at some sizes. All changes feed back to representation process and evaluation models. There are change variations based on design revisions. We have the ability for you, your team to store its first design or half of a design, its second one, its third one, and to see if you're getting better or worse. There are change alternatives based on alternatives, not variations, but alternatives based on diverse decision models, alternative scenarios, sensitivity assessments, etc. In other words, Rishi, in his computer, will be able to watch everybody's work, and he'll be storing the latest version of everybody's design. So we can compare things as we go. These have to be compared, and usually one must be selected or proposed for action, or some combination. Implementation in the future changes the representation data. That's right, each generation updates. And in summary, synthesis of your design is not a linear process. The methods and models do not scale, but they must interact across the problem, geography, size, scale, and culture. This is the basic template. And this is the template that organizes the, the software. There's a past, a present, and a future. And this symbol is an architectural symbol that says, I'm not sure where the future is. I'm not sure how far. We're defining it as 40 years. 20, 20, and 40 years. So that's the past, that's the present, that's 40 years from now. That's us right now, status quo. And we're trying to get to what will happen, might happen, should happen, and years. Every place that I've ever worked has a history, and a history of plans. And that history is reflected in the current regulations, which are pretty damn good. The present has data, process models, and evaluations, and that's a set of maps which these people have made. Constants are important. Constants are things that you know will happen, or you have 99% confidence, will happen during the course of this time to this time. So you're foolish not to take them into account. A constant is something that is 
planned, decided, and funded. If it's just planned, it's not funded, it's not necessarily a constant. And we do, John, have constants. There's, John has a map of transportation improvements that are planned and funded within this period. And that becomes part of the transportation set of diagrams. These are the requirements, and there are 10 of them. And they do not have equal status, depending on your team. I talked about that. For the environmentalists, protecting the current critical resources might be number one. For the developers, number one might be provide better infrastructure for our industry. That's the most important, second most, third, fourth, fifth. And each of these can be improved in a number of ways. And I'm hoping at least 10 ways. And those 10 ways are diagrams, and they're color-coded. And there are at least, well, there's an infinite number of ways of getting through, but there are at least eight basic ways. And our problem is somewhere in here. And these methods are better, I, I'm convinced, but I only have one experiment to demonstrate it, that the methods of called anticipatory, participatory, and sequential are really best here. And the methods called rule-based, optimized, and agent-based are best here. And in this area, we're, we're not dealing with certainty. We're dealing with uncertainty. There are things that we don't know or can't be sure of, which means we need a set of methods that are fast, potentially iterative easily, and yet combine design and science. Whereas out here, it's mainly the sciences, and out here, it's mainly the designs. And the methods that I think are going to be the best, that I'm quite convinced, actually, is going to be the best is called constraining and maybe combinatorial. And let me show you what constraining does. It basically assumes a, a, a sort of a zip distribution among your requirements. That there's going to be a dominant one, a secondary third. There, there may be something. They may have a, a not a, a smooth zip curve. They may have a curve that goes something. Quite a lot. And that implies that your team ought to start by thinking about number one. In other words, don't start with something that's relatively unimportant to you. Start with something that's of first importance. And you consider all of your options, and you decide that's the one I want. You can decide that all three are what you want, by the way. There's no limitation. And then the second one has to be studied, and you pick the one that's best fitting the first one. Then you do the same thing on the third one, and you pick the one that fits the first two. And at some point you say, how with that? Let's just get on with it. I'm serious. I'm very serious. In other words, if you haven't carefully thought about the most important, you're lost. If you have, the rest are noise to the, to the design. And let me give you an example. This is, this is doubling Cagliari, which is the capital city of Sardinia, which is part of Italy. Okay. It's a workshop that I ran with Tess, uh, linking, linking Hanover University in Germany and the University of Cagliari, engineering, architecture, landscape architecture. That's the city. It has a very sharp growth boundary. We were working analog. This was not done. There were no computers involved in this study, except at the very end. We created a set of teams. Each team was given a system, which is what's going to happen to you in about half an hour. Each system is color-coded. Each team had to provide about 10 diagrams of ideas. A diagram of idea, in this case, is a colored diagram, a sentence of text in English, drawn in permanent marker on plastic, and rank ordered. So that's number one, two, three, four, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Called habitat, visual landscape, and transportation. And the thing about these is that they can be overlaid. 
we created a bunch of teams. First of all, we laid them all out on a table. And they're laid out on the table just like they're going to be laid out on your computer screen. And then each team, after discussion, is given 15 minutes to make use of these sheets of plastic. They take the ones they like, they're all numbered, A4, B9, 10, and 11, C8. They take them to a light table, they talk about them over lane, they can throw one back and say, that's not the one we use, get another one. They photograph it, they put the things back into the table, and they digitize the diagrams that they've used. That process is what's in your software, including drawing the diagrams. They then get a very rapid evaluation by those 10 teams that did the systems diagrams, saying you've done very much better, better, no change, worse, very much worse, and the process is dead, including flamingo habitat, which is a big thing in this system. And then they iterate. In other words, they take their first design and they improve it to their second design and their third design is now all digital. And then they have to present it, which we probably won't do tomorrow. But it's basically, this is the schema for growth and these are the diagrams that are in it. That's very important. In other words, instead of just showing the product, they're showing the components of the product which basically says these are the agencies and people who are responsible for doing the processes, managing the changes that created the synthesis. And, and the software, as you will see, keeps track of what's in the plan. And then they presented it to the regional planners and the mayors and stuff like that. And the, and, and the experts, there were six designs, the, the experts were asked, which is best, and they disagree. And so I basically got up and I said, well, let's see if we can figure something out. And this is one Carlos, who was my doctoral student at that time, who's now very, doing very well as a professional consultant. And these are the six designs with different interest groups behind them. And what he had on his computer are all the components. And so we asked the question, which diagrams were used by six, five, or four of the teams? In other words, if your team thinks it's a good idea, number nine, and you use number nine, and they use number nine, maybe number nine is a good idea. And what he did in real time was he simply synthesized a design, a seventh design, out of the most popularly used diagrams in the other. And the people there, the experts, said that's a pretty good solution for our problem. And it's one of the ways that you can come very quickly to a, an agreement. Just look at what people chose in their self-interest. It's certainly a basis for negotiation. That kind of system we have built into the software, keeping track of who's done what. That's it. <laughs>